It began as the worst summer of my life. The evening before the first day of summer vacation, my mother broke the bad news to me. I was in the kitchen washing dishes and dreaming about the wonderful things my friends and I will be doing for two whole months. Practicing for the annual double dutch contest, which we will definitely win. Going to the roller skating rink, the swimming pool, the beach, and sleeping as late in the morning as I wanted to. Tasha. My mom broke into my happy thoughts. Your father and I decided that you're old enough now to take on certain responsibilities. My heart came to a sudden halt. Responsibilities? Yes. You do know what that word means, don't you? I nodded, watching her dice an onion into small, perfect pieces. You're 13 going on 14, and your father and I decided that you're old enough to watch Junior this summer because I'm going to start working again. Oh, no! I broke the dish with a crash. Not that, Mama. Junior is my seven-year-old brother. <coughs> that, go. And has been following me like a tail ever since he learned how to walk. And to make matters worse, there are no kids Junior's age on our block. Everyone is either older or younger than he is. I'd rather be in school than minding Junior all day. I could have cried. Natasha, there won't be a dish left in this house. You're not going to spend all summer ripping and roaring. You'll babysit Junior. But Ma, I said, it'll be miserable. That's not fair. All summer with Junior, I won't be able to play with my friends. She wiped her hands on her apron. Life ain't always fair. I knew she'd say that. You'll still be able to play with your friends, she continued, but Junior comes first. He is your responsibility. We're a family and we all have to help out. Worked that next morning. Junior and I both stood by the door as she gave her last minute instructions. Junior held her hands and stared up with his innocent look in his bright brown eyes, which everyone thought was so cute. Dimples decorated his round cheeks as he smiled and nodded at me every time Ma gave an order. I knew he was just waiting for her to leave so he could torture me. Tasha, I'm depending on you. Don't leave the block. Yes, Ma. No company. Not even Naomi. She's my best friend. No company when your father and I are not home. Yes, Ma. Don't let Junior hike in the park. Yes, Ma. Make, sure you make yourself and Junior a sandwich for lunch. Yes, Ma. I'll be calling you at 12, so you'd better be in here fixing lunch. I don't want you all eating junk food all day long. Yes, Ma. Don't ignore Junior. Yes, Ma. Clean the breakfast dishes. Yes, Ma. Don't open the door to strangers. Yes, Ma. Then she turned to Junior. Now you, young man, you are to listen to your sister. Yes, Mommy. He sang out. Don't give her a hard time. Show me what a good big boy you can be. Mommy, I'll do whatever Tasha says. She kissed us both goodbye and left. I wanted to cry. A whole summer with Junior. Junior turned to me and raised his hand. This is a vow of obedience. He looked up at the ceiling. I promise to do whatever Tasha says. What do you know about vows? I asked. I saw it on television. A man- Shut up, Junior. I don't feel like hearing about some television show. It's too early in the morning. I went to the kitchen to start cleaning when the downstairs bell rang. Answer the intercom, Junior. If it's Naomi, tell her to wait for me out on the stoop, I called out. I knew that it was Naomi, ready to start our big, fun summer. After a few minutes, the bell rang again. Junior! I yelled. Answer the intercom! The bell rang again and I ran into the living room. Junior was sitting on the couch looking at Cartoon. What's wrong with you? Why won't you answer the bell? He looked at me as if I were crazy. You told me to shut up. I told you I'd do everything you say. I pulled my hair. See, you're bugging me already. Do something to help around here. I pressed the intercom on the wall. That you, Naomi? Yeah. I'll be down in a minute. Wait for me out front. Okay. I quickly washed the dishes. I couldn't believe how messed up my plans were. Suddenly there was a loud blast from the living room. I was so startled that I dropped the plate and smashed in the smithereens. My will kill me, I thought as I ran into the living room. It sounded like a whole piece of furniture were being sucked into the vacuum cleaner. Junior! I screamed over the racket. You have it on too high! He couldn't even hear me. I turned it off myself. What's wrong? Ma vacuumed the living room last night. It doesn't need cleaning. You told me to do something to help. He whined. I finished the dishes in a hurry so that I could leave the apartment before Junior bugged out again. I was so anxious to get outside 
that we ran down the four flights of stairs instead of waiting for the elevator. Junior clutched some comic books and his checkers game. He put his Mets baseball cap on backward as usual. Naomi sat on the stoop and Junior plopped right next to her like they were the best of friends. Hi cutie. She smiled at him turning his cap to the front the way it was supposed to be. What are you going to do today Naomi? He asked. Junior, you're not going to be in our faces all day. I snapped at him. Mama said you have to watch me, so I have to be in your face. You're babysitting, Tasha? Naomi asked. Yeah. I told her the whole story. Oh, uh, that's not so bad. At least you don't have to stay in the house. Junior will be good. Right, cutie? She grinned as he pinched his cheeks. See, your brother thinks he's cute because you don't have to... No pesky little brother or sister to watch, I grumbled. You ready for our double dutch practice, she asked. Yvonne and Keisha are going to meet us in the playground. <laughs> Mama said we have to stay on the block. Junior answered before I could even open my mouth. No one's talking to you, Junior. I pulled Naomi off of the stoop. I promised my mother we'd stay on the block. But the playground is just across the street. I can see the block from there. It's still not the block. Junior mumbled as we raced across the street. We always went over to the playground to jump rope. The playground was just by the entrance to the park. There was a lot of space for us to do our fancy steps. The park was like a big green mountain in the middle of Broadway. I figured out a way to keep Junior from telling that we really didn't stay on the block. Hey, hey Tasha, can I go inside the park and look for caves? People, People said that if you went deep inside the park, there were caves that had been used for centuries ago with Native Americans still lived in northern Manhattan. No. Ma said no hiking in the park. She said no leaving the block, too, and you left the block. Look how close we are to the block. I mean, we can even see it. You could get lost inside the park. I'm gonna tell Ma you didn't stay on the block. Okay. Me and Naomi will hike with you up to the cloisters later. There's a museum that sits at the top of the park overlooking the Hudson Rivers. Now read your comic books. Will you play checkers with me, too? You know I hate checkers. Leave me alone. I spotted Keisha and Yvonne walking to the playground. All of us wore shorts and sneakers. Junior tagged behind me and Naomi as we went to meet them. Remember, you're supposed to be watching me. He said, how could I forget? The playground was crowded. Swings were all taken and the older boys played stickball. Some little kids even played in the sandboxes. Keisha and Yvonne turned and Naomi and I jumped together, practicing a new routine. We were so good that some of the boys in the stickball game watched us. A few elderly people stopped to look at us too. We had an audience, so I really showed off, spinning and doing a lot of fancy footwork. Suddenly, Junior jumped in the ropes with us and people laughed and clapped. Junior! I screamed, get out of here! Remember, it's your job to watch me! He grinned. My foot slipped and all three of us got tangled in the ropes and fell. Your feet are too big! Junior yelled. Everybody roared. I was too embarrassed. I tried to grab him, but he got away from me. Get lost! I hollered after him as we, he ran towards the swings. I tried to forget how stupid I must have looked, and I went back to the ropes. I don't know how long we'd been jumping when suddenly a little kid ran by us yelling, There's a little dog, wild dog loose up there! He pointed to the steps that led deep inside the park. People had been saying for years, that a pack of abandoned dogs who turned wild lived in the park, but no one had ever really seen them. We forgot about the kid and kept jumping. Then one of the boys our age who'd been playing stickball came over to us. We're getting out of here, he said. A big yellow dog with red eyes just bit a kid. I took the rope from Yvonne. It was time for me and Naomi to, to turn. That's ridiculous. Who ever heard of a yellow dog with red eyes? Naomi stopped turning. Dogs look all kind of ways, especially wild dogs. I'm leaving. Me too, Yvonne said. Keisha was already gone. No one was in the swings or the sandboxes. I didn't see the old man who usually sat on the benches. Guess we'd better get out of here too, I said. Then I realized that I didn't see Junior anywhere. Junior! I shouted. Maybe he went home, Naomi said. We dashed across the street. Our block was empty. Yvonne ran ahead of us and didn't stop until she reached her stoop. When I got to my stoop, I expected to see Junior there, but no Junior. Maybe he went upstairs? Naomi said. I have the key. He, he, he can't get in the house. Maybe he went to the candy store. He doesn't have any money, I, I don't think. But let's look. 
We ran around the corner to the candy store, but no Junior. As we walked back to the block, I remembered something. Oh no, Naomi. I told him to get lost, and that's just what he did. He's probably hiding from us somewhere. You know how he likes to tease. She looked around as we walked up our block. He might be hiding and watching us right now, looking for him. She peeked behind one of the cars in doorways and even opened the lid of a trash can. Junior! I called. Junior! No answer. Only the sounds of birds and cars, sirens, and a distant radio. I looked at the empty stoop where Junior should have been sitting. A part of me was gone, and I had to find it. And another part of me would be gone if my mother had found out that I'd lost Junior. I ran back towards the playground, and Naomi followed me. He's got to be somewhere right around here, she panted. I ran across past the playground and into the park. Tasha, you're not going in there, are you? The dog. I didn't answer and began climbing the stone steps that wound around and through the park. Naomi's eyes stretched all over her face and she grabbed me by the arm. It's dangerous up here. I turned around. If you're scared, don't come. Junior is my only baby brother. Dear God, I said out loud, please let me find him. I will play any kind of game that he wants. I'll never yell at him again and I promise never to be mean to him again in my life. Naomi breathed heavily behind me. I don't think Junior would go by go this far by himself. I stopped and I caught my breath. The trees were thick and the city street sounds were far away now. I know Junior. He's somewhere up here make believing that he's a king of a mountain. Hey Junior! I called. I, I, I was kidding. Don't get lost. We heard a rustling in the bushes and we grabbed each other. Uh, pro probably just a bird, I said, trying to sound brave. As we climbed some more, I tried not to imagine a huge yellow dog with red eyes gnawing at my heels. The steps turned the corner and ended. Naomi screamed and pointed up ahead. What's that? I saw a big brown and gray monstrous thing with tentacles reaching toward the sky, jutting out of the curb into the path. I screamed and almost ran. Well, what is that, Naomi? I don't know. This is a park in the middle of Manhattan. It, it can't be a bear or anything. I screamed at the top of my lungs. Junior! Some birds flew out of a tree, but the thing never moved. All Naomi could say was, Dogs, Tasha. I, I found a stick. I'm, I'm going up. You wait here. If you hear growling and screaming, just run and get some help. I couldn't believe how brave I was. Anyway, that thing, whatever it was, couldn't hurt me any more than my mother if I didn't find Junior. Sure, Tasha? No sense in both of us being mauled, I said. I tipped lightly up the steps, holding the stick like a club. When I found when I was a few feet away from the thing, I crumpled to the ground and laughed so hard that Naomi ran to me. <laughs> Naomi, look at what scared us. She laughed too. Ha, <laughs> that tree trunk. We both laughed until we cried. Then I saw one of Junior's comic books near a bush. I picked it up and I started to cry. S see, he was here and that animal probably tore him to pieces. Naomi patted my shaking shoulders. Suddenly there was an unbelievable growl. My legs turned to air as I flew down the steps. Naomi was ahead of me. Her two braids stuck out like propellers. My feet didn't even touch the ground. We screamed all the way down the steps. I tripped over the last step and I sprawled out on the ground. Two women passing by bent over me. Child, are you hurt? One of them asked. Then I heard a familiar laugh above me and I looked up into Junior's dimpled face. He laughed so hard he held his stomach with one hand. His checkers game was with him in the other. A little tan mangy dog stood next to him, wagging his tail. I got up slowly. Junior, I am going to choke you. He doubled over with squeals and chuckles. I wiped my filthy shorts with one hand and stretched out the other to snatch Junior's neck. The stupid little dog had the nerve to growl. Me and Thunder hid in the bushes. We followed you. He continued laughing. Then he turned to the dog. Thunder, didn't Tasha look funny holding that stick like it was going to beat up the tree trunk? I put my hands around Junior's neck. This is the end of the tale, I said. Junior grinned. You promised I'll play any game he wants. I'll never yell at him again. I promise to never be mean to him again in my life. Naomi giggled. That is what you said, Tasha. The mutt barked at me. Guess he called Junior himself. Himself, I guess he called himself Junior's protector. I took my hands off of Junior's neck. 
Then, Naomi had a laughing spasm. She pointed at the dog. Is that what everyone was running from? This is why I trust in my guard. People say he's wild. He just wants a friend. Thunder looks like he's already got a lot of friends living inside his fur, I said. We walked back to the block with the dog trotting right by Junior's side. I checked my watch when we got to my building. It's 10 to 12. I have to make lunch for Junior, I told Naomi, but I'll be back out later. The dog whined after Junior as we entered the building. I'll be back soon, Thunder, he said, after I beat my sister in five games of checkers. Now he was going to blackmail me. I heard Naomi giggling as Junior and I walked into the building. The phone rang just as we entered the apartment. I knew it was Ma. Everything okay? Tasha? Nothing happened? No, Ma. Everything is fine. Nothing happened at all. Well, the summer didn't turn out to be so terrible after all. My parents got Thunder cleaned up and let Junior keep him for a pet. Me and my friends practiced for the double dutch contest right in front of my building, so I didn't have to leave the block. After lunch, when it was too hot to jump rope, I'd play a game of checkers with Junior or read him a story. He wasn't as pesty as he used to be, because now he'd had thunder. We won the double dutch contest, and Junior never told my parents that I'd lost him. I found out that you never miss a tail until you almost lose it.